All right, folks, welcome. Um, we're about to have fun. We're about to have fun. So yesterday, we uh, or the other day, I'm sorry, um, we went ahead and left off and we started section five, uh, chapter five, sort of say, where it begins to talk about um, firewall authentication, right? One of my favorite sections, because of course, um, you know, I do that roughly week to week, month to month with new sites being built up. Um, I tend to have to troubleshoot a lot. Um, so, and this is where a lot of, you know, routing and switching and just knowledge of, um, of just computing in general, like, you know, your knowledge from your content A plus, all of it comes in, right? It comes into play as it relates to firewall authentication, right? And so what we touched on, right, uh, in our last session is that we had an intro to firewall authentication. We spoke about the different methods of firewall authentication, right? We talked about local password authentication, right? We spoke about, you know, and I'll go ahead and bring it over here. We spoke about server-based password authentication, right? Um, or quote unquote remote authentication, right? Whether it's using a radio server, LDAP server, right? To go ahead and authenticate users. And we talked about two-factor authentication, right? Um, so we're gonna go ahead and today we're gonna have fun. We're going to simulate the first two. Unfortunately, I cannot simulate the last one. Of course, I do not have a 40 token. Um, I do have a software token service that I cannot use, unfortunately. Um, but we're going to go ahead and have, because it does require alliance as well, we're going to have fun with the first two. Okay? So, in our topology, right, we have, of course, right, we have two networks, right? The firewall is segmenting to broadcast domains, right? We have the user local area network. We have 192.168.1.0 slash 24. We have the server local area network. We have 172.16.1.0, right? Slash 24, right? With the Windows server being a dot 25 in that server subnet, right? And of course, I'm connected to, of course, port one. Um, as it connects to my, uh, of course, my local network, so I can go ahead and manage that, right? So what we're going to do, right? We're gonna go ahead and first start with local password authentication, right? We're gonna go ahead and, and do the example of that. And so just as a review, as a refresher, local password authentication, what it is, is it authenticates users by usernames and password combos that are stored on the FortiGate. That's it, so let's go ahead and start with that. Let's go ahead and log in. All right. So we're logging into the FortiGate, right? We're using that management interface, right? And so we have our network, but we don't need to worry about IP addressing right now, right? Because all we're going to do is just create users, right? So we're going to go here, right? We're going to go ahead and say local user. We're going to say next, right? And we're going to say test. All right, let's say test one, right? We'll give it a password, right? Click no, right? We'll hit next and we'll hit submit, okay? So we have tests, right? And so we have our user here, okay? That's established. So we will also go ahead and go ahead and create an administrator has a local user, right? We'll go ahead and do that, right? We'll say admin test one. All right. Come up and make it all easy. All right. All right. From the password, I'm going to give it the profile of top access, right? And if you can see, it's using different profiles based off of Linux. Like I told you guys, this is a Linux system for the OS, right? We can configure other things like two-factor authentication, trusted host. We haven't got to that yet. Um, and restrict admin to guest account provisioning, provisioning only. We're not going to do any of that, right? We're just going to prove local password authentication. So we're going to click OK. All right. So we locally configured the username and password. Right, so let's go ahead and test it out, All right? So first we're gonna test the admin part, right? So we're gonna go ahead and click, All right? We're gonna go ahead and put in its username, 
admin test one. And I'm going to go ahead and log in. And later. And we're in, right? Very simple, right? Those credentials are locally on the box, right? Let's go ahead and test, right? A local user that is that was just created on here and not so much an admin, right? So we have our local user, right? Test one. Let's go ahead and look at our topology. Let's go ahead and stop this because we need to go ahead and test via a browser. Let's go ahead and delete that. And let's go ahead and add Linux box. Let's see if this works, guys. If not, we can go ahead and move on. One second. Let's go ahead and pull up the PC. All right. All right. Let's go ahead and bring that here. There we go. All right. Go ahead and see. All right. Yep, it's looking like uh, that's not working, which is perfectly fine. We can go ahead and stop here. There we go. Let's actually close that. Let's close that, which is fine, right? So we tested local password authentication. All right. Go ahead. Let's go ahead and cross that off the list. So local password authentication has worked, right? So what about remote password authentication, right? Um, how does that work, right? So for us to do remote password authentication, right? We need to go ahead and have a server, right? That's utilizing, you know, some protocols, right? To go ahead and communicate credentials, right? We talked about TACX Plus, we talked about LDAP, we talked about Radius, and we talked about POP3. Today, we're just gonna go ahead and do LDAP, right? Lightweight directory um, access protocol, right? And so we're gonna go ahead, right? We're gonna pull up, right, the server, Okay, and here is our server, right? I'm I'm a big uh, I'm a big uh, Legend of Zelda uh, fan, so this domain is called Hyrule, right? Oops, let's go ahead and click no on this one. All right, let's go ahead and log in. All right, so while that's logging in, right? Let's go back to the Florida game, right? And so we created our user here, right? And so we're gonna go ahead and delete this user, right? Right, because we're not gonna use that for the rest of the lab, right? We're just gonna focus on administrators, right? And so we created that local administrator here, right? But what that does and what we talked about yesterday is that this makes us susceptible, right? To, you know, if, you know, if a uh, you know a uh, bad actor, right, or a threat actor went ahead and attacked this Fortigate, what happens is they would have our credentials here, right? They would be able to go ahead and log into the device if they get access to the device, right? But, but, right? If we have a remote server, right? It would, of course, that's also sitting behind the firewall. They would have to do a little bit more digging, right, and a little bit more work to go ahead and to get your credentials. And to go ahead and you know um, log in to the firewall and different network infrastructure resources. So let's go ahead and set that up, right? So first things first is that we need to go ahead and add servers, right, to this uh, firewall, right? And first create that in you know that communication, right? So we have our LDAP servers uh, section, right? We're going to use LDAP. We're going to go ahead and say create new, right? And we're going to call this Hyrule.net, right? That's the server, right? And that server IP is 172.16.1.25. So let's go ahead and do that, right? Server port, of course, for LDAP 389, right? We're going to use CN, okay? And we need to go ahead and change this to regular, right? Um, whenever you're setting this up, right, using the default, right, um, is it recommended, right? Nor does it does it barely work, right? Um, 
if you use simple, this is if your firewall is directly connected to everything, your end users and your server all on the same subnet. That's typically not the case. So um, and to fully secure, right? Um, you know, your LDAP server that's going to be your authenticator, you want to go ahead and just use regular, right? And so what does this mean? Because we see a username and password. What this is, right? You would go ahead and create what they call a service account, right? Or you can just create a, us a user account, right? Um, but we're going to say service account for now, right? And this service account, right, is creating the connection, right, between the FortiGate and the server, whether it be Windows or Linux, right? And what this account is able to do, it is able to read the entire directory, right? So it has a lot of privileges, right? It's a domain user, admin account, et cetera, right? So we need to make sure that, um, we make sure that we give it the privileges only that it needs, right? Because we're also, um, we're network engineers, but we're also security engineers at the same time aka network security right so let's go ahead and go create that service account and then we're going to come back here right and we're going to go ahead and test it out so let's go ahead and open up that server right prior to uh this session i went ahead and you know booted up a windows server right and i installed the role of um i installed the role of i saw the role of active directory users and computers right or quote unquote domain services so we're going to go ahead and enable that. So we'll go ahead and go under manage service accounts. We're going to say new. We're going to call server. We're going to go ahead and just call this Fortinet. Okay. Login name is going to be Fortinet. All right. Okay. There we go. And let's go ahead and give it a password. All right, and this information is what we're going to type in in the Fortinet. So we have our service account, right, called Fortinet. All right, let's go ahead and pull it up. Like we have it here. All right, we have our user login name called Fortinet. Let's go ahead and put that same information on the Fortinet side. So we're going to type in Fortinet, and we're going to type in that password I created. I have a question. Yes, sir. Do, so do you have to like give that service account any type of like special permissions or no? Yes, it would. So I'm, yeah, so I'm not sure if you heard it, right? Okay. So by default, if you create a service account, let me go ahead and pull this back up, right? It should be a member of domain. Users, oh, okay. Right? Okay. I see. I see what you're saying. Okay. Right. Right. And so it needs to be a certain member, right? But this would, this is going to, dive into architecture design and security on the server side you have to know how to secure your accounts right because by default if you don't put any restrictions or what have you i can create the account called my Kevia, put it into the fortigate and that'll be my connector account do i want to do that no right because if i have 47 fortigates and different devices if somebody finds out uh, my Kivia's uh, username and password, what happens? They had all your information. You know what I mean? So, right, um, and of course, we're security-centric, right? We want to give the least privileges possible, right, with the least access that it needs as possible, right? For this lab, I'm giving it full access, right? But essentially, right, um, if you're, you know, if you're server-centric or you have a server team, you would let them know that, like, hey, let's give them the least privileges as possible. Um, make sure they can go ahead and just communicate with Active Directory, what have you. They have admin privileges and what have you. And store that password, right, in a uh, in a password management tool, right, KeyPass or LastPass or what have you. Um, and give, you know, make sure a limited amount of people have that um, that service account. Okay? Gotcha. gotcha. Yep, All right. Sense. Good question, man. Good question. All right, so we have this service account, right? And let's go ahead and first, and let's test connectivity, right? So Fortinet, they have buttons here. I'm also going to show you the CLI, but they have buttons here. We can just we can do a one button click and see if it talk if it can talk with the server. So we got a successful, right? But we also got to test some other things, right? We need to see if we can see the entire tree, if we have access to what happened. How do we do that, right? 
let's go ahead and go here. Let's go to distinguish name, right? And so what this also does, this confirms that we can actually see the entire Active Directory tree, right? Okay, and as you guys can see, right? DC equals Hyrule, comma, DC equals net. Now, us being network security engineers, we don't need to be server experts, right? We need to know a little bit about Windows networking, right? And a different ah, so this is like role. the OUs. There you go, exactly. Okay. Okay, exactly. So, 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 so if you see, you. if you see here, right? Let me go ahead and pull this. Go ahead and move this up a little bit, right? So, right, we see the OUs, right? We see the OU that we created, right? And so we see the different containers, and we see the different objects within the different containers, right? And let me go to service accounts and all that. So it's replicated over here. So that connector, right? That that Fortinet service account, it has been established. We can confirm that by looking at the Fortigate, right? And so you guys are probably wondering, okay, well, what am I doing here, right? What am I clicking here? What am I, what is the distinguished name is for? Well, if you want to better secure, right, what access you want to give the Fortigate, right? As far as, you know, logging in and looking at user account, you want to give them, again, the most minimum amount of access as possible, right? You want to make sure you create that bucket that says, hey, here are all the users for the organizations. You can just look in here. We don't need you to look in different OUs that maybe have service accounts um, for different services or what have you, right? Because somebody can hack, you know, hack one of your end users that's maybe on the server team. And now you have given, right, without even trying, you went ahead and said this. When he said this and said, okay. And they have access with just this to the entire domain tree. So if somebody's one of your users, right, one of your um, coworkers or what have you, infrastructure guys, server guys, he has his laptop stolen and they have all the passwords. They can log into this device because you're, the connector has been created, right? That tunnel has been created to Active Directory. And you're just saying, hey, anybody, right, that lives in that Active Directory server can go ahead and log in and they'll be authenticated by this server because we didn't drill down and see what, what container that we need to pull from. I see. So this is like when you're giving permissions to like certain folders and like, um, exactly. File Explorer, like when you close, close to it, close oh, to it, right? To it. Okay, similar to it, right? Active Directory users and computers, right? Uh, the entire the entire container tree object uh, structure. It works similar, but you know, similar but different, right? Different okay. terminology okay. have. But you got the concept, right? Okay. So okay. let's let's go ahead and drill it down, right? And let's go ahead and let's look for. Look for the OU that says just users, right? We're just going to say users, right? Okay, we're just going to stick to users, right? And let's go ahead and click OK, right? So we have that set up, right? Let's go ahead and create a user, right? And then we're going to go ahead and also create a group, right? Uh, because we're not going to configure that group on this uh, Fortigate, right? Because the thing about, right, the theory about remote authentication is that we're not storing any credentials locally on a device, right? We're just referencing, right, a remote server. We're referencing a group that lives on that server, right? And there's users within that group, right? So it's an order of operations of doing things, right? So we have the server connected to AD, right? So now when you go ahead and create groups and put some users in that group, okay? So let's go ahead and go here. Let's go ahead and blow this up. Can you guys see the screen? Do I need to make this a little bit bigger for the Windows Server? I can see it. Actually, yeah. you see it. All right, let's go ahead and blow that now. All right. So we have this. Let's go ahead. Let's create a folder that's called. Let's call it Fortinet Admins. Well, let's make it lowercase. This is Linux to talk about. Fortinet admins, right? So we're gonna go ahead and make that security group. Boom, 
All right, so let's go ahead and create some users. All right. So she, oh, she's looking, I might spell wrong. Let's say my key here, all right. Right, because she's one of our network security engineers that should have access to the firewall. All right, let's give her that password of one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so she's such a great engineer, right? She doesn't need much, right? And so we're going to add her, right? Make her a member of that group, okay? All right. Check names, there we go. All right, go ahead and did it. We're gonna go ahead and click apply. We're gonna hit okay. We're also gonna make an account for Rex, right? Which is my dog, right? Because Rex is just an end user in the organization, right? We're gonna give him the password. Password. There we go. All right. So we're not going to put Rex in the group, right? So now that we have this established, let's go ahead and go back to the for the name. All right. So let's leave this how it is. All right. And let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and go to system. We're going to go to administrators. All right. And we're going to go ahead and say match all users in our remote server group. All right. So we're going to call this users. Admin. At. On our server, right? So now we're going to go ahead and add our server so I can query it. All right, we're just going to say that. We're going to hit OK. That's it, right? We made it very vague, right? Just Hyrule.net, right? And so we're going to go ahead and go back to administrators, right? Because we're only going to use the group. We are not putting the actual usernames on there, right? So we're going to go ahead and go here. We're going to do the same thing. Match all users in a remote server group, all right? Super admin, and we're gonna call it users, right? And we're okay, right? We got that set, right? Of course, I'm gonna go ahead and, as you guys should do as well, confirm layer three reachability. We're gonna do a ping to that server 172.16.1.25. I can go ahead and reach it. All right. Okay. Let's minimize this. And let's just double check again. Right. Make sure we can communicate with our server. All right. So we're successful. We're successful. Right. And so first, let's go ahead and test our users. All right. Okay. Let's do the same thing for Rex. Okay. Right. And that's just a test. Right. We can also. All right, wait one second. We can do a few things, right? All right, we can go ahead and click OK, All right? Now I'm gonna go ahead and try to log in to the firewall, All right? So let's try this. All right, so I'm able to log in, right? Akivia being a user within the Fortinet admins group, right? We're able to log in. 
but let's see what happens, right? If I try to log into REST, right? Since I didn't put it in the Fortinet admins group, right? It sh REST shouldn't be able to log in. Guys, I was able to go ahead and get to the firewall as Rex. And we confirmed that he's not in the Fortinet admins group, right? He's not a member, right? So how did he get into the firewall, right? How did he get in there, right? Is it because he's in the users group? Oh. Exactly. Exactly. Right. And so we didn't drill down. Right. And and again, this the entire thing. Right. The NSC4. Right. Network security engineer. Right. I want you guys to look at the whole foundation of it. Right. From a network security standpoint, we did not secure our network. OK. And so we gave it free reign. Right. We gave it free reign and it can actually, you know, we can actually see everything. Right. So that's just saying, hey, just look at this. You know, look at the entire tree. Now, anybody, right? Anybody on the anybody on the firewall, right, can go ahead and log in to the device. That's the misconfig we did, and this is why you want to be very detail oriented and know exactly what you're doing whenever you're doing remote firewall authentication. Okay, so let's go ahead and secure it up a little bit, right? Let's go ahead and tell, um, you know. Rename the group, right? We're going to make it match on both sides, right? Because we do have to do that. So let's go ahead and find, right, the Fortinet admin group. Let's go ahead and look for it, right? So we found the group, right, in uh, AD. We're going to right click and say add selected, right? And so once we do that, we're saying, hey, look for users, right? Look for users in this group called Fortinet admin. Now, what we need to do is that even though we're not creating, you know, we're not creating users locally, but we do need to make sure the groups are created on a FortiGate as well, right? So they match on both sides, okay? Right? It's not mandatory, right? But you guys being network security engineers, you would just want to make sure that it matches, right? Just to go ahead and keep track of it. Similar to configuring a switch or a router and, and putting a description on it. You just want to go ahead and make it the same because every day you may or may not look at it, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and call this Fortinet admin, all right? Okay. So we're gonna keep that. Let's go ahead, go to administrators, right? All right, and we're gonna go ahead. Right. Let's go ahead and take a look at that, right? So this can stay users, right? That's fine, right? The remote user group is what's important. We're using the group called Fortinet Admins, right? And so now that's there, let's go ahead and log out. And let's see if I can log in for Rex. Hmm. All right, again, it's not working. Let me try to go ahead and log in with my key here. Now it works. I know you guys have questions. Go ahead and ask it. No, this just makes sense how my job is kind of configured for us to log into all these different firewalls. <laughs> <laughs> so, no. It just makes right. sense. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, right, what you guys experienced, right, and what you guys just saw is how that you know, how that uh, authentication works, right? And that's, this is just using LDAP, right? Because we're just doing, we just did a uh, LDAP setup on an LDAP server, right? And so we configured everything correctly, right? A um, couple of things, right? And this is where um, I implore you guys, um, implore you guys, because uh, you guys will do this in the future, right? Research, right? Work with the server team, right? get to know what certain things is, right? Um, I made the mistake in the past thinking that I can use the default values of um, of Fortinet, right? But, you know, sometimes that doesn't work for your actual environment, right? And so went ahead and started the job that, you know, that I'm working now, 
um, and left, you know, my boss came to me, said, hey, Dave, go ahead and set up uh, LDAP so all the admins can log in and we can log any changes that happening versus, and again, this was last year, so I'm, I'm the golden child that's coming in, in uh, helping out, right? But um, better rather than, you know, just log into a shared admin account. Freaking dangerous. Um, so I set it up and I left the common name identifier, right? The CNI has CN. Every organization isn't the same, right? They may not be using CN, right? And so typically, right? And, and this is outside of the exam, right? You have the option to use different common name identifiers. You can use the UID, right? Which is the actual like username of a certain user right or right or, or users or you can go ahead and um use sam account name which is of course the most famous one which is the one that worked for me right um just keep that in mind if you ever set that up in the future right you guys may not set up tomorrow next week or what have you but in the future just know hey let me check if i'm not an expert let me check in with either maybe a tech that's a little bit more experience with this or maybe one of the server guys and say hey you know how is it set up on the other side okay i got All a right. question about um this way of like authentication okay um you know how you can configure a v like a ssl vpn and the clients were used like you know well they would use um for the client yep. can i use like a ldap server as a form of like authentication versus saving the user's name locally in a absolutely okay absolutely and 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 i'll do you one even better you can have multiple servers oh really absolutely hmm. Interesting. right so and of course we'll continue the, the lab tomorrow because i know we're getting up on time right mm -hmm. um and I, and I do some more configuration what don would do in that instance right is he would have multiple servers right and all he would do, right, he'll have these tunnels with his different sites. He would reference each tunnel, right? Each tunnel with a firewall policy that's pointing to each individual room group that's an AD for your different servers. That's it, right? And Don is going to go ahead and go to user groups and say, hey, this is site A's uh, user groups. This is site B user groups, or what have you. And what we're going to do tomorrow, you'll see, right? And we're going to have firewall policies that reference each of these groups that we're creating. Okay. Okay. So I'll expand the lab out a little bit just so you can see it. I'll add IPsec tunnel. That's perfectly fine. Okay. okay. Yep. All right. So last but not least, right? We saw right, that this worked, right? Um, you guys being network security engineers, right? And you guys, you know, getting ready to go ahead and take the exam, you guys, you know, have to be able to be multifaceted, right? The GUI is amazing, right? And you're gonna see screenshots in on the exam. I am for oh, certain, I can tell, you, okay, I can tell you that much. But here's the flip side. You will be shown the CLI. So the Fortinet gods may say, hmm, on the topic of remote firewall authentication, I'm not going to show them a picture of the GUI. I'm going to show them a picture of the CLI. And they need to be able to tell us what commands you need to put in, right, to test, right, to do an LDAP query to a server from the CLI to see if that connection is made and two, to see if users can be authenticated. Okay. That was messy of the Fortinet guards. Hopefully. You know, the <laughs> Fortinet guards are on the side. So it's my job, right, um, to go ahead and show you how that looks like. And I want you guys to actually burn this into your brains um, for the exam, but also for the future. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me go ahead and show you guys that, right? So we go into the CLI, right? We configure LDAP, we created our server, right? Um, but, right, it's a little bit better, right? And of course, the, the CLI gives you a little bit, you know, a little bit more information. Let's go ahead and test 
you know, a query, right? And, and what I mean by query is testing, trying to authenticate a user. So we're going to go ahead and put diagnose, right? We're going to say test, right? And we're going to put auth server, okay? And of course, it's going to give us the different protocols. We're just using LDAP. We're just using LDAP, okay? And it's going to tell us to put in the server name, right? And so I'm going to go ahead and minimize it. Right, I call the server name Hyrule.net, right? And I'm going to type that in exactly how it's typed, right? Hyrule.net, okay, all right? And so next, right, I need to go, and of course, you're not going to get, you know, you're not going to be told what you need to put as far as a argument. That's what it means by ARG. So I put the server name. Next would have to be the username. So I'm going to go ahead and put Rex, right? And the password, I would have to put the password for Rex's account, right? Go ahead and type it in, right? And I'm going to go ahead and click enter. Right? And so once I click enter, immediately in milliseconds, it's going to say authenticate Rex against Hyrule.net. It's either succeeded or it failed, right? Tells me, comes back also, which I, what I love about 40 OS, is going to tell me where it stays, which OU it stays in, what, what container it stays in on that server, right? Let's try an account that doesn't exist, right? Let's say Don, right? And let's say Farisha is the password, right? If we hit <laughs> enter, right? Yeah. If we hit if we hit enter, right, we get a failure, right? Authenticate Don against Hyro.net failed, right? right? He doesn't exist on that server okay all right okay guys so we're gonna go ahead and end it here i'll go ahead and upload the video we're going to continue on to this lab i'm going to go ahead and work tomorrow throughout the day and add expand the lab a little bit to of course meet don needs but also to um talk more about remote um remote authentication okay right. sounds, good. sounds good all right guys you guys have a great night all right you too guys take care bye